Welcome back, true believers, and all you merry Marvelites, to another very special Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy related video. And I apologize for my voice crack because I am way too excited for the conversation that I'm about to have today with the one man wonder himself, none other than the amazing Slick Moth, everyone's favorite YouTuber on the gaming spectrum for superhero games. If you guys don't know, he has been doing amazing coverage for Gotham Knights, Suicide Squad, the rumored Superman game said to be developed by Warner Brothers Montreal, which is very exciting. So please, everyone go follow and subscribe to Slick Moth right now because he definitely deserves all your support and check out all of his amazing videos on his channel. We've done several collaborations in the past. Slick Moth is one of the best YouTubers I know and I'm very fortunate to be here today talking about Guardians of the Galaxy for Marvel Video Games and just our current thoughts on where the game is standing right now in terms of the public eye, what we're excited for, and what we might be a bit concerned about given its current information that we know from the gameplay trailer, the developer interview, and the Game Informer cover story that was released a few uh, days ago, or at least a week ago at this point. But anyways, what is going on, Slick Moth? How are you doing today? I'm so excited to be here, Evan. Thank you for having me on, and thank you for that uh, very kind and polite intro. Like you said, I've been uploading a lot of videos lately on the Superman side of things, so uh, for any of your audience that might be interested in the DC side of things of well, of course, I'm going to be covering uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. We'll be discussing that here in this video. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm, I'm on the grind to 100K, so uh, please boost me. Um, but yeah, super excited here to talk about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Getting very close to that 100K, so definitely, guys, be sure to subscribe. He definitely deserves all your support. So yes, Guardians of the Galaxy. This is just going to be a laid-back discussion between Slick and I because there is a lot to talk about. And first off, it's very interesting to see this type of a game be made in general, we were kind of talking before we started recording, is that this is, again, another part of the Marvel Games Square Enix partnership, if you guys know, which you should, is that Marvel and Square have formed a multi-year, multi-game partnership since 2017 to form a plethora of AAA Marvel games, and the first of which in that partnership, which is now kind of branded as a bit infamous, is Marvel's Avengers, which is kind of funny because it's such a big, well-known, branded IP in the superhero realm, and also just pop culture in general being the most financially profitable pop culture item right now in terms of the massive media of movies with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then thinking they could easily translate them into a video game format and just instantly make money like nobody's business. I mean, Slick and I know that the president himself of Square Enix, Yosuke Matsuda, went on record saying that he thought Marvel's Avengers was going to completely outsell both for both Slick and I's channels. These are the biggest games we talk about. Both Spider-Man PS4 and the entirety of the Batman Arkham series just because it was Avengers. And clearly, if you know now, that game has officially lost $70 million in developer costs. And in turn, the game has received kind of lackluster to average-ish reviews. I mean, me personally, I gave it a 7 out of 10, thinking it would get better in time, but clearly that is not the case whatsoever. And now, the Square Enix brand has kind of had this tainted image going forward into making more of these superhero games down the line. Maybe a potential X-Men game after Guardians is finished. Fantastic Four, Defenders, other heroes and teams within the Marvel media could be turned into games. But a lot of people may feel a bit reserved because of Square Enix's overall image and how they have handled their previous installment of Marvel and gaming form with Avengers, and now they're doing Guardians. So a lot of people are interested in what this game is, but still feeling a bit reserved as to what the final outcome could be. Well, let's be honest, Evan. They only lost $70 million. That's not that much. You know, <laughs> they, they, it's just $70 million. I mean, what's the big deal? Um... No, I mean, like you said, Marvel's Avengers was a colossal disaster in every level from the quality of the game. You know, there are things that are released that are objectively not good quality, like, uh, let's say, the Transformers franchise on, on the film side. But at least it makes money. Like, it sucks, but it makes money. Marvel's Avengers sucked and it lost money. <laughs> like, that is the unholy combination uh, that, that is just brutal for any company. And like you said, it, it really has hampered the excitement of this game, I think, because if they had just dropped a Guardians of the Galaxy 
video game. Let's say they drop this exact trailer and this exact same gameplay demo um, before Marvel's Avengers. And Marvel's Avengers was actually the second game in this partnership. I think that people would be a lot more excited for the game. But like you said, because there is this precedent of, hey, Marvel's Avengers it was the first installment in this partnership. It happened to be a very bad game and also sell terribly and be a financial disaster for everybody involved. Um, I think that that has hampered people's excitement for the game. But there are a couple of things that we can see here, which I'm sure we'll delve into further in this video that I think really distinguish this game from the counterpart here, Marvel's Avengers. And I think one of the biggest things is the narrative in the story. I felt that Marvel's Avengers did not have a very strong um, campaign. But looking at this game, it really reminds me a lot of the Telltale Marvels of the Galaxy game. But think of if that game had triple a action gameplay style with more open world elements you know of course telltale games are good at what they do but they don't really have engaging gameplay at all whereas this game it has those fun gameplay elements that we've come to expect in traditional triple a superhero video games so i think that this game really is a mix of both worlds where it does have that branching narrative it has the engaging choices which Mar you know marvel's avengers didn't really utilize and I think that's really fun and exciting. I love games with branching narrative options. It just makes me feel more invested in the story. I liked it back. And when Telltale did it, I liked when Black Ops 2 did it, you know, Call of Duty in the Call of Duty franchise. So I'm just a huge fan of that, that template personally. So I'm really excited for those choices and branching narrative options here in this game. And moreover, I'm really excited to see the gameplay and how that sort of molds into the story. Now, my personal feeling on this is that I am more confident in the narrative, in the story that they're going to be telling than the gameplay. I don't think the gameplay is bad by any means. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But I do look and compare it to some popular AAA superhero video games. Again, we'll just go Batman Arkham Knight and Spider-Man PS4. From what I'm seeing here, I don't think the gameplay necessarily matches up to those two titles. Um, but with that being said, that doesn't that's not necessarily a bad thing. Not every game has to have like the best gameplay you've ever seen in your life, right? I think overall the story looks really interesting and there are a lot of really interesting elements that they're they're adding here. Overall, I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm quite excited for this game. What are your thoughts on it? So you make a lot of interesting points in the sense that they're really playing it safe. And I really appreciate them doing that because of what we knew and kind of didn't know going into Marvel's Avengers, which was the biggest problem with that game, is the marketing, because it was not clear to the public what exactly the game was for quite some time, and then it was only like a few months before release and before that beta came out where, iconically, you and I and Salvage were playing it and we just fought that giant spider robot and we just had the worst time imaginable <laughs> when playing that together <laughs> it was so odd and so poorly designed as a boss fight and just as a cooperative experience and knowing that it was a live service game so similar to the division destiny or infamously anthem where they're supposed to add content for years to come on a continuous basis, supposed to continuously make the player want to go in, invest hours and grind, and try and make progression throughout a, a daily task system or weekly task system or something like that. And knowing that type of game structure for characters like The Avengers just did not fit that game whatsoever. And that was the, the biggest problem is how it was developed in terms of its structure and how it played with its overall gameplay format and the loop being totally monotonous and repetitive and not engaging whatsoever. So that was the issues with Avengers, and I don't mean to diss on that game as much as I do, but I just try and set out a, a pure example of what the difference is in comparison with how Square Enix, or more specifically the main developer of Eidos Montreal, is handling Guardians. And they've gone on record flat out during the you know first reveal of Guardians, is that it's a complete 180 to Avengers, and exactly what Avengers should have been. It's a third person, single player, action-adventure, story-driven game. Fantastic. That is the perfect route to take for these superhero games. It's always worked for Batman, the Arkham series. It's clearly worked for Spider-Man. And now, for a team like Guardians, it's really going to envelop you as the player in this intergalactic, cosmic, Marvel gaming world that you've never really been able to fully interact with before in comparison to, say, the Telltale game that Slickmoth mentioned earlier, or even Ultimate Alliance 3 where we played as the Guardians in that game, or some of right. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, the fighting game, which is a fighting game. It's not like an action-adventure game. You just fight characters. But this is really diving into the lore of Marvel Comics, the world of the Guardians, 
and a new and original story that is different from the films and the comics, just like Spider-Man and the Arkham series have done in the past, which is what I want, and which is what I actually appreciated about the Avengers, is that the problem there is that I felt that they were too similar to their MCU counterparts, just because of how popular they are. I mean, that ranged from Bruce Banner looking exactly like Mark Ruffalo, that was Tony Stark acting just like Robert Downey Jr., even though he was voiced by Nolan North, a huge voice actor in the gaming spectrum. Uh, and even though I did really like Kamala Khan's inclusion as the main protagonist, and I think Sandra Saad did a great job of bringing her character to life, it still fell kind of under some traps of trying to mimic their bigger on-screen copycats or their overall live-action versions of the characters because that's what people are familiar with. This, what Agreed. I appreciate right off the bat, is that I don't recognize a single actor in the voice cast. And I love that because it's new. I, I'm not connecting it or associating it with Chris Pratt and him as Star-Lord or Dave Bautista as Drax, even though you do kind of get a similar vibe with that version of the character. But for the most part, they're trying to fully differentiate it in a new and unique way that will allow people to connect with the Guardians in a completely different manner that we've never seen before, which I really like. That's even going so far as to get like a D-list villain. What we see in that gameplay trailer, uh, Lady Hellbender is a really recent character in the Marvel comics, and to be honest, I've never even heard of her until they showed the gameplay demo. I'm not, I'm not going to act like I do. I never heard of her before, but getting a character like that in this game gives new life to the product and will invest fans in a new way that they've never, never, never been able to interact with the Guardians before in such a grand scale, and you can play as it in a great super intergalactic Marvel-filled adventure in space with choices like Mass Effect and just give you that very immersive experience to get you in the shoes of Star-Lord, make you feel like you're actually making impactful decisions in the story, and just have a good time. Now, I know there's a lot of people complaining that you only play as Star-Lord, but then if you were to play as other heroes, we would then fall back into some of the pitfalls that we saw with Marvel's Avengers, where clearly in an yep. Avengers game, you want to play as the Avengers, where if you were to play as a Hulk game, like the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction game that came out on the PS2, that's a great game, but that, that's a Hulk game, so you're only going to play as Hulk, obviously. And for the Avengers, you obviously want to play as different characters, but the problem there is that you, they are spreading out their resources in the development studio to try and make each character feel unique, when really it's not going to work in the way that they're envisioning on that big of a scale. They're trying to have their cake and eat it too in that regard and it's not it didn't work out for that game in the slightest and that's why they're doing again a 180 into guardians i would love to play as gamora and rocket and groot and drax all the other guardians and hopefully we get other members of the team down the line like nova and moon dragon and quasar and all these other cool characters but star lord focusing his play style into the only playable character in the game i think is the right choice i think there will be enough variety where you can control your teammates in combat scenarios while still feeling feeling like that they're an important part of your team and just have you get fully invested into star lord's story in the guardians of the galaxy i completely i agree with everything that you said and when you introduce multiple playable characters uh you can't have everything all at once, right? Like once you start incorporating those elements, then you are then moving away from what has worked in uh, something that is salient as a trend across superhero video games, Marvel and DC. Again, going back to Batman Arkham, Spider-Man PS4 versus games that haven't worked, um, which I would include Marvel's Avengers in that. Typically a, a salient trend is that having a single unified playable character that leads the game is um, what contributes to the game actually working. And when you incorporate multiple playable characters, this is one of the things that I'm most nervous about with Gotham Knights, is that it will be The Division or Marvel's Avengers or, or something like that. And that's exactly what I don't want the game to be. And I think that that's part of the reason Gotham Knights, I think, was delayed is because they saw the disaster that was Marvel's Avengers and they have to pivot and they have to go in a different direction. And I think with this game, they're also learning the same lessons. They're taking a look at Marvel's Avengers as, as painful as that experience was to be excited for that game for years and years. You know, of course, I'm talking about, I, I don't think any of us were really excited once we saw what the game was going to be. But I mean, when the game was first announced, right? We're like, holy shit, we're getting a, a Avengers game? Like that's amazing, right? Now we kind of are skeptical. Like any, t any game in this franchise or installment were like, 
I don't know, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? And I think that's a lot of how people are approaching this game. But I think that going with Star-Lord as the only playable character is actually a sign that they are doing the right things with this game. Many people are thinking the opposite. Many people are thinking, well, we can't play as every character. This game is like cheap and it's poorly made. But in reality, I think they're actually, like you said, playing it a little safer. They're borrowing from the Spider-Man PS4 sort of model of having a single playable hero. Obviously, I know you can play as Miles in like the first one uh, and Spider-Man um, 1, obviously. But you you know what I'm saying. Primarily, you're playing as Peter. It's like a single player action RPG game. And that's what they're going for here. And frankly, I think it includes a lot of really interesting moments because of the fact that the story uh, you know, for instance, there's that moment where you, uh, where Rocket Raccoon is thrown across the the gap, and it says like Rocket is furious with you for allowing him to be thrown across this, you know, across the gap there. Um, as soon as you see that, you you kind of recognize like, okay, you really have for for this game to work, you can only play as one character because all of the choices revolve around you as that main playable character. And it just makes sense for for this game to be structured in that way. So I understand that not everyone's going to be happy with that and that, that you'd love to play as uh, other playable characters. But um, I also think that the gameplay mechanic that they have where you can control the other characters in combat and you can you know have a combo uh, sort of ultimate move where all of the characters get involved. And also, like I said, with the, with the D-pad and being able to utilize those buttons to, to uh, basically command the Guardians. That is a really cool gameplay element that we haven't seen a lot of in superhero video games, and I think it looks really fun, frankly. So I've got to say that I am uh, not that the community is pessimistic, but I'm certainly less pessimistic than some people who may be looking at, at some facets of the game as being limited. And I view those actually as strengths and as course corrections from the disaster that was Marvel's Avengers. And I think on a personal level for me, I just love seeing more Marvel characters get these AAA video games. I know a lot of people want a Daredevil game. I know a lot of people want a Punisher game. I understand that getting solo titles with individual characters, like if you were to get an X-Men game, specifically for a Wolverine game in the X-Men, or Wolverine game featuring the X-Men, would be more ideal for some people. I just think it's cool to get a bit more variety. And even with Avengers, while that game was not even close to the experience we wanted to see, it still is something new. And I appreciate them for doing something new in that regard, but doing something new, but understanding what works and doesn't work about these types of games. And seeing how these superhero titles are getting more and more apparent with the upcoming Gotham Knights release, like Slick Mob said, also with Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League with Rocksteady making it, and the rumored Superman game, and of course the inevitable Spider-Man sequel from Insomniac. People want these superhero games. It's just that the, lot, the majority of the public want them to be good. That's what they're worried about because they don't trust Square Enix right now based on what they did with Avengers, and seeing everything that they're saying about Guardians, at the very least, knowing there's no DLC, there's no microtransactions, there's no t live service model, it's just a single-player, story-driven, action-adventure game. F have fun with the Guardians, go buck wild, and once you buy the game, that's it. And I'm fine with that, and as long as it's fun, I will be satisfied with my purchase. And at the very least, is it going to be better than Spider-Man PS4 or the Arkham games? I don't personally think so, but we can't know for sure until it actually comes out. But at the very least, I think Slick and I both agreed that it will be at least better than what Avengers turned out to be. And I think, again, that is a great step in the right direction. I think that is exactly what Eidos, Crystal Dynamics, Square Enix, and whichever developer they end up using next for their multi-year multi-game partnership needs to understand is that is the exact type of experience that people want to see from these superhero games is just a solid story with satisfying gameplay and just have a great time with these characters that we all know and love and just see new stories with them that are something that's different from the films different from the comics and just modernize them for the, for the current day and just do something unique and innovative with them that will hopefully get more people invested in the realm of gaming and if they're able to do that then i think that they've accomplished their objective so i am still a bit skeptical about certain things like what slick moth mentioned the kind of combat looked a bit janky in some of the footage that we saw hopefully in the time that releases in about four months from now less than four months and on october 26 2021 they'll be able to hopefully polish that a bit more hopefully the decisions are impactful 
Uh, I, the story looks interesting for right now, but we need to see a bit more of it down the line before we can determine whether or not it'll be fully different from the MCU or something a bit completely directly based off those films or again something that's just innovative and fresh we'll we will have to wait and see but for the most part i do think idos and square are making the right decisions going forward in a proper manner and will at the very least deliver, deliver a more engaging experience than what we saw with marvel's avengers uh any final thoughts on the game no yeah i i compl i think we're totally aligned on this and i think that i understand why people are skeptical of this game the gameplay does not look the best um it it it's almost like the frame rate looks kind of low during the gameplay segments uh, which is weird for a demo uh, you know compared to like ratchet and clank or spider-man ps4 if we're comparing there in terms of like gameplay fluidity um, I'd say Insomniac is one of the best in the in the business. I'd also say that um, Rocksteady is really good on, on this front. Um, I don't think it's going to compare on that front. But it does incorporate some really interesting and unique elements, like I said, where you can control your squad. That's really cool. And with the, the branching narrative choices, as I said, that is unique and different. Uh, it, we've seen it in Telltale games, sure. Um, but on the superhero video game side, we haven't really seen this fully utilized. And it's going to be really, really interesting to see how that plays out in a real way in a triple hero, uh, a triple A superhero video game like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And I think overall, I'm I'm really looking forward to this game actually. And and the more that I hear about it in terms of interviews, I, I also get more excited. And another thing that this game is doing in terms of playing it safe is that it's not going the route of like the huge open world uh, cyberpunk GTA 5-esque map size, right? Like I feel like even on the Gotham Knights side, that's what they were trying to do a little bit more. And uh, that's been proven to be a huge challenge and risk as we saw with uh, cyberpunk when you try to go that big let's just say i'm glad that this is not like some open world game with like infinite planets <laughs> like no man's sky or something where you're like oh the, the planets are infinite and they're they're auto generated and you can go wherever like that's where you get into really dicey territory i think and so so yeah i think this is going to be a little bit of a safer um, play the Marvel's Avengers, but that means that it's probably going to pay off. Um, so, so I think the risk is a little bit lower, but uh, w which makes the reward maybe slightly lower. But I think this is going to be a really solid and fun experience, and I can't wait to do videos for it in the in the coming months. And um, I think we'll both continue covering it and doing collaborations on the game until it comes out. And once it does. Um, hopefully we can do a spoiler review. And I, for one, can't wait until that happens. And with all that said, everyone, that is the video that Slick Moth and I have for you today. Thank you all so much for watching. Please go subscribe to Slick Moth again. All of his links will be in the description. He definitely deserves all your support. And if you like anything that we talked about today, go follow him. Go subscribe to him. Subscribe to me if you like to. Like the video. Share it. All that would be super appreciated, and if you're interested in even more superhero content, Slick Moff has definitely got you covered, as do I on the Marvel game side of things. And until next time, everyone, thank you all so much for watching, and stay merry, Marvelites. Peace out.